Zing here back from CNH Small Engine um, for a, uh, another video. This one uh, deals uh, solely with guns because I'm no longer making the um, the small engine repair videos. So uh, if that's what you're here for, sorry. Um, video right now that deals with um, uh, some stuff I got for uh, Christmas here. Uh, I got some new um, uh, clean clean materials, uh, bore brushes and stuff like that. I got a new um, cleaning kit. Because I, I really needed some new uh, new brush and stuff like that for my guns, um, gun clings, stuff like that. Uh, it's always good to have uh, 20 gauge shotgun um, shotgun cleaner, um, well shotgun um, bore cleaners. I, because basically I, I use these constantly for my mud mows and niggas all the time out there. And always get a good stock of uh, 30 caliber uh, hoppies, uh, um, brass. Uh, bore cleaners because I got a whole new uh, clean kit raw here in the Austin clean kit system there and I also I got done cleaning a couple of my uh, guns up here I was up the range here a few days back and just got done clean them up and I always recommend um, after you're done up there it, it, it seems to be like bronze uh, brush is actually clean better for some weird reason than the uh, the, the typical uh, uh, like nylon brushes out there. Um, I, I, I'd recommend nylon brushes for like the barrels that are uh, non-chrome line or um, chrome line barrels and stuff like that. But uh, it seems like the typical uh, bronze bristles out there from Hobbies and the other um, companies seem to clean better for the non-chrome uh, line barrels out there. I don't know why, but uh, it, does, it just seems to be um, clean better. But that's my take on that's my opinion and if somebody else has an opinion of that uh, you're more than willing to uh, voice that for that but uh, in, in, in from my relative perspective they seem to be cleaning better than your typical um, nylon bristled uh, brushes I have here I got a couple of these ones right here these are um, uh, I'm thinking Montana Max ones a bit more. these ones are Montana Max uh, the spiral ones right here they have the um, Copper uh, main core right here, plus their black and nylon. Um, the ones a 30 cal, the other ones a, a eight millimeter right here. And I'd, I'd say overall, the Montana ones are actually they, they look like they're better built because they're a nice, nice spiral uh, wound core versus the Hoppies ones. Because these Hoppies ones, I'm constantly buying them because I say after about four or five times clean my guns up because I clean my Mosins probably by one, probably by five passes per. Um, uh, five passes after I get done, maybe shooting or hunting around. So I put some uh, cleaner on them and just run through about five, six, seven times. Then I just use the uh, the bore snake to pull it through once to pull out all the crap after that for that. But uh, I recommend if you've got a non chrome line barrel, just use the um, uh, typical old standby, the uh, brass uh, ones that poses, as opposed to the standard. The rest of the, the newer, the new production ones like the nylon bristles out there. But nylon should be fine for a chrome line barrel. So that's one good thing about those. And um, I also got a new cling rod. And then you also clean kit. I'm, I'm going to show the whole entire clean kit. I got a new rod. This is a uh, Hoppies. It's it's aluminum as opposed to their standard. Um, they're all ones. I think they're brass or copper out there for that. And they have a plastic angle up here. It spins around so it's easier to shove down the barrel. So it'll actually twist because most of the time when you clean your barrel out you put your um you put either your patch on or you put your clean brush down there you can actually see the uh the the um the clean rod turn because they're rifling down there so these new ones seem to be i'd say high quality uh they, they're hoppies made and uh, they seem to be a, a pretty good deal i got this one up at um uh what's it called um what's it called? i'm trying to get their mind up in century three they're about 25 bucks for a whole clean kit it, it, it's basically a general clean kit for from like 17 up to about uh, 45 caliber, I believe. And uh, they seem to be able to clean up better than your typical copper ones or the, the brass ones as well, too. So it, it seems to be clean up pretty nice. And it's, it's overall nice condition. And I, I've been using it for, um, I, I should say, I've been using this type uh, for a few uh, months now. But I got a whole new clean kit, so it's good to go for that. Okay, the next thing I got to talk about is uh, your Mosin-Nagin uh, takedown tools. I got a couple here right here, but I can't seem to find my third one because I don't know what the heck I did because I got done cleaning my one gun on it. It, it, was, it was my best one that I had. Uh, some of these clean tools, uh, if you get them whenever you actually buy a brand new Mosin-Nagin or it's just a refurbished one from like AIM Surplus or J&G Sales or Coop Distributing or something out there like that, 
I usually give you one of these in the um, the box plus an oiler. Um, let me see. You might also get a jag and a clean rod and uh, a couple other things with it as well too. Uh, I always recommend having at least I'd say having at least two or three of these on hand because sometimes uh, because they're they're mass produced out there, uh, they may give you a false positive on the, the depth uh, for your your firing pin coming out of your bolt head. So be aware of that because um, I had um, one of my buddies online, uh, he was having problems with his gun, but his gun wasn't, wasn't opening completely on her after he got done shooting and he cleaned the piss out of the, um, uh, the chamber and stuff like that. And I told him, well, did you uh, double check with your, your firing pins, um, the, uh, the firing pin head protrusion? He said he did, yeah. And um, I told him to go on eBay and buy a new one. And sure enough, uh, he checked it on her with the second one he bought on eBay and uh, apparently it was giving him a false positive on the, the higher end one because they have two markings on most of these. Uh, some of them, they don't have markings on them at all, uh, but the Izzy marked ones right here with, with a triangle on them, they'll have 75 and 95 thousandths of an inch difference on her for that. So uh, I recommend getting at least two or three of these. Uh, they're only about I mean, three or four bucks. You can, they're, they're basically relatively cheap out there, so it's cheap insurance to keep your gun uh, in, in, in good shape and stuff like that, but you don't want to have a blowback situation where the primer uh, gets pierced on the back of the, um, let me show you here. You don't want to have a situation where the primer gets pierced in the back and then the firing pin actually goes too deep into the back of this thing right here and basically blows it out and have that hot gas come back to your face. So always be aware of that. I don't think I ever made a video about that before, so just keep that in mind and um, uh, always maintain that as well too. So. This is this like this before. It's buy buy maybe two or three on eBay. They're only like about four or five bucks, and they're relatively cheap insurance for that. Okay. And the next thing, let me see what else I got here. Uh, I got some new cling solution. Uh, I I recommend this two thumbs up. It seems to be blowing away every cling solution I have. I I, I basically tried WD-40 originally. Uh, WD-40 didn't do it too, too, too good of a job because um, WD-40 tends to, um, uh, I don't want to call it, um, it tends to get sticky over time and it's not a real good thing right there for that. I tried PB Nut Blaster on my guns and uh, it seemed to be working better but uh, PB Nut Blaster is what they consider a, um, uh, what do you want to call it, a, a penetrant and penetrants by their very nature tend to be um, uh, like almost like like diesel fuel thin. Uh, they're they, they don't stick around too much. Basically, um, they they evaporate in maybe about a month's time if you leave in your barrel your gun. Uh, I found a new one here. Uh, it's called Aero Aero Krill Oil right here. It's it's called it's made by Canada Labs. Uh, it says Aero Krill the oil that creeps. And basically, I tested this myself here, and I give it uh, two thumbs way up because. Um, I was cleaning out one of my Mosinegans. Um, uh, it's my uh, Finnish M39 Mosinega that I pulled out of my um, safe, and I haven't shot in probably about five years. And I put this down inside the barrel. I, I basically plugged the one end of the barrel up, filled the entire barrel up, and and also the chamber as well too, and let it sit for about two weeks so in down my shed down here. And I, I I pulled it out here a couple days ago, and I got done cleaning the. Um, the gun up is it you gotta take the whole damn thing apart and then also you don't wanna miss any parts because uh, most of the finished Mos and Nagans out there that I I seen online, they have um, uh, bedding uh, bedding plates. I, I call them bedding plates in between the stock and the receiver so um your barrel and the um, uh, your your barrel and the receiver will be like basically free floating inside of the actual stock part of the gun right there for that and they did that because uh, it it actually improves the accuracy and stuff like that. And back to this stuff right here. Um, it's called Aero Krill. Uh, it's it's basically uh, their uh, spray version of the um, Krill oil out there for it. It's it's an it's an aerosol form, and it actually works quite well cleaning out your gun. So I would definitely recommend it. Uh, it's mainly meant for like breaking up a loose part or um, breaking up um, like um, uh, rusted parts that make them loose. Uh, stuff like that that needs to be cleaned, and, and um, it basically keeps it um, clean from rust after you put it on there. If, if like you say, say you're you're, um, you're you're putting your gun back together and you get it all cleaned up, and you don't want to you don't want to put a lot, like a lot of oil or something like that. You just want to put it in um, your safe or something like that. 
and you don't want to have all kind of oil all gunked up down inside because oil over time it, it tends to like you know getting getting nice and sticky and stuff like this. Well, this stuff's perfect for like just putting like a, a preventive coating on any metal surfaces. So basically, if you got if you got a bunch of mosinagans, basically what you do for um, those is I just, you just take the whole damn mosinagans um, bowl apart and everything else, and um, you basically just uh, take all the components apart and. You just you spray the piss out of them. You get to the can, just spray all the parts with the, the, the krill oil over here, and just, uh, just wipe it off. And just, just, leave a nice, uh, just leave a nice surface coating on the actual bowl components and stuff like that on there. And you can put the thing back together, and you can put it back into your safe or whatever storage facility you have for your gun. Uh, you, can, you can store it in your home off-site. You can do whatever you, you, whatever you want out there for that. But uh, it definitely works a lot better than what I've seen in the other... Um, other products out there, and um, uh, it's it's it says specifically in a can for like cleaning guns and rifle barrels and stuff like that, and it's also good for for removing um, we want to call it carbon deposits. Uh, Where's that on here? Uh, rifle barrels. It says let me see. I think it's on a website said that on. I think. Uh, let me see here. Uh, that's not it. No, 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 no. Dissolves gum. Cross. Here we go. Yeah. Uh, dissolves gum. Grease oil removes carbon deposits as well without attacking the metals and it provides proper um, lubrication. It also displaces moisture as well too. It says resists resists um, you know, getting, getting stuff in wet and anything else in there. So it 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 uh, it, it, it they don't come out and say it acts like WD-40 because WD-40 is what they call water displacement formula 40. That's why they call it WD-40. Uh, I don't think it's as good as WD-40 in that one aspect, but it does displace uh, water if you have one um, like like say you're up you're up at your range and uh, you got done shooting like a hundred rounds of um corrosive ammunition through your gun uh i say the best recommendation for that is since this stuff's so expensive it's say just dump dump a bunch of wd-40 down a barrel to flush out the excess water and just wipe it down with a a, a patch or whatever you get done with that and once you get done with that um get your um your brushes on stuff like that and run it through there maybe five times with, with some of this stuff after the WD-40 had been wiped out of your barrel and inside of your chamber as well too. But uh, this axe is a nice good rust preventative and a, a, an overall good pre um, preventative um, from getting you all corrosion and stuff like that down inside your barrel if you store your gun in some type of like high humidity environment like, like a basement and it might have a shire or something else like that and they're for that. But uh, you can get this stuff online. Uh, I got this stuff on eBay for about, you know, about 10 bucks, 10, 11 bucks plus shipping. It was about three bucks right there for that. Uh, they typically retail online at our web, um, websites for like 20, 25 plus shipping and handling. So if you can find it on eBay, I'd recommend buying it. Uh, they do make multiple sizes. It's uh, This one is a 13, 13 ounce. This is the their economy size. It says new convenient king size, but king size in my definition would be something maybe Another four inches higher than this, so it's not really a kink size in my definition of that sort right there for that. But it definitely works as it should, and it will definitely protect your guns. And um, like I said before, if uh, uh, it'll clean out your barrel almost like spotless. Basically, I, I took my um, M39 out of the safe and uh, shot this stuff down inside and basically filled the entire barrel up, let it sit for two weeks, and I just drained it out here a couple days ago. And it came out almost perfectly clear inside the barrel and there for that. So I definitely give it two th thumbs up. I recommend it. Um, it definitely helps uh, better than PB Blaster or PB Parenting Formula. I'll see what that looks like right here too. Here's your standard PB, PB Blaster. This stuff works perfectly fine for most stuff out there, but uh, I recommend the Kano if you're in, in, in a really bad bind or something like that and you want something that's going to work maybe three or four times is better out there but the only problem is the price is going to be a lot higher where uh, your PP Blast might be going for maybe about four or five bucks down at your advanced auto or something like that and this stuff typically retails for like maybe 25 bucks right there 20 25 bucks depending on where you buy that uh, because this stuff's not meant uh, to be sold in retail stores it says right in a can uh, for industrial use only not for retail you don't order direct from them or get it from some kind of distributor online so that's what I recommend right there for that. Uh, let me see what else I'm gonna talk about. Uh, let me see. Uh, let me see. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Yeah. Next thing is um, if you want to modify. Uh, it's, let me see here. Your trigger assembly on your Mosin Agans. 
I got a bunch of spare parts and things else like that for uh, my Mosin and Nagins over here. And one of the biggest complaints I always had with Mosin and Nagins was uh, their triggers. Uh, they have a two stage trigger on these things. And some of these triggers can be quite heavy and long and for that. So I'm basically, what you can do, uh, a real simplistic way of doing it is making sure the tang area right here, right here, the part right here is completely flat. Uh, basically, you can you can accomplish that by one of two ways. You can either try to bend it, bend it like that, or put in a vise and bend it slowly over. You want to bend it nice and flat and straight right there because some of them, most of them, if you buy them on eBay or they come out with a refurbished gun, they'll have a slight curve upwards on here, and um, that, that's that's basically what causes the uh, the heavy heavy trigger and long travel. If you can um, basically straighten this thing out and polish. The flat part right in here, you want to polish this whole area right here where the actual uh, trigger rests on it down inside here. Let me see this hole here and flip it up here. Let flip it around here. Basically, what you want to do is have this thing, it sits in there almost like that, or basically, and you want to pivot point down, and you want this entire area flat and then smooth on the top. You want to flat and smooth on here. In the back, I'd say the back, um, let me see if I get a bad pen right here. This back, uh, one port, I'd say the top, like one eighth percent right on here. You want, you want to have this like slightly polished right on here too. So, wherever the trigger breaks, it provides a nice crisp, um, uh, nice crisp and um, easy uh, pull on her for that. So, I always want to polish your areas on her for that. Or you can simply buy a uh, finished trigger assembly on eBay or a couple other places they have online. Uh, there's a guy on eBay, uh, his name's um, uh, What For Want or something on eBay, I, I can't remember what it was, but uh, I bought uh, multiple things from him over in Finland, and um, the Finnish actually modified their triggers on their um, Finnish modes and things to operate a lot more cleanly, as you can call it that. And I got a couple here, well, I got uh, most of them here, I'll, I'll show you they actually look like here, the pose and standard Russian ones as well too. So, let me see here. The finished ones, let me, let me give you a comparison between these two over here. Okay, here's your finish. Here's your finished trigger right here. The actual part you pull down on your trigger assembly right here. Uh, this one right here, they put two roll pins. Let me see and show them here. They put two roll pins down inside of the actual part right here to put more pressure and un, or I should say more even pressure on it so whenever the trigger clears itself on there uh, you won't have to put as much effort on it for one thing and also um, this is the this, the trigger sear itself it's basically almost completely flat across right here and it's also um, polished remember I was telling you about up right here they, they, they basically polish it up here it's also made out of a, uh, a, I think of a different material as well too. It's not the standard uh, black as the Russian ones have on here. You can see it. here's the finished one, and here is the uh, the Russian one on the bottom right here. It's it's a lot more polished. You can tell it's all milled right here. Where the the finished one, they do um, basically mill them, but uh, it's basically highly polished on this whole area right here. They got polished up on top up here. And it's slightly beveled in the back right here. And they polish that as well too, so it's a, it provides a nice, clean, smooth break. Uh, they also polish. Oh, you dumbass! Where'd it go? There you go. I got it. No. The roll pin. Uh, they polish the roll pin as well too. Let me show that right here. Here's a here's a finished roll pin right here. And here's the standard uh, mill spec Russian roll pin. Most difference, the Russian one is basically blued, and you can see along the edges is um, uh, I'm gonna call it crudely. Um, uh, I guess they mill these things. I really don't know. But the finished one, they do take the time to polish these things. You can basically see how polished and smooth it is on the outer edges, and that basically contributes to how easy the thing's gonna break for your trigger assembly as well too. So if you want a nice, clean, smooth break on there. And uh, with, with like hardly um, any any relative uh, pulling back on it because uh, they're always heavy, maybe five, 10, 15 pounds, depending on um, how bad of a trigger you got in your Mosin and they're out for that. So I always recommend upgrading your gun with one of those trigger assemblies because you'll you'll definitely love it after. It'll, it'll even help your accuracy too and stuff like that. 
and it's a highly um, sought after investment. Like I said before, you can buy them on eBay. Uh, you can buy a. Um, uh, you can also buy them on um, Gunburger. It's a guy in Gunburger. It's the same guy from um, eBay. He sells the whole trigger assembly in there for it. So you basically get your sear spring OEM, new old stock. You get your roll pin as well too, and you get your two stage trigger with the two roll pins down inside here as well too. So you get one, two, three. You get three things right there. Um, I got them from him. I think they're about 25, 30 bucks. I think. I think that's what they were on there, but um, they do, they're definitely an improvement over the Russian ones because the Russian ones, um, they're basically crudely made and um, uh, they're still basically the same thing, but they're uh, they're not improved, uh, as you can call them that, because uh, the Finns uh, took the Russian parts and basically modified them so they're going to be a lot easier to work with and stuff like that, so that's a good thing right there if you, if you can find them out there for that. And the other one right here, I got a bunch of uh, new extractors, but I was changed out my extractors and my uh, Mosin over anyway. And the finished ones, you can always tell them because they have a nice, like a plum brown color on them. I got to buy four or five of these things. Because I always buy them in bulk, and if anybody I know might need any, I, I try to make some for maybe ten or fifteen bucks here. These these extractors, but uh, they're 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 um uh they seem to be uh, in better shape than the Russian ones you get on eBay. And um, they're always plum, like a brownish plum color like that, you can see right there. And um, some of them have more bends than other ones on them. Some uh, look relatively flat. Other ones have a, a lot bigger um, bend on them for that. And you always want to polish the extractor face on these things regardless of where they come from because if you don't polish them on there, uh, your bolt, the rimmed part will have uh, more resistance to um, going closing on the actual, you know, when you put your gun, you put your bullet up in the chamber, and your chamber has your cutout part in the back of it right here, and basically what happens is, this thing is, I'll bust you basically, basically what happens is, your gun has a bolt, I don't have any bolts sitting around here, but uh, it goes up against here like this, and this rubs right on here against this until it locks down in place like that, and then it holds it. So basically, whenever you're loading your gun up in there and you're putting it around your chamber, it has to go over the resistance of the, the lip right there. And because of that, if uh, this thing is rough on the edges right here, it'll be more of a resistance. Sometimes uh, I've seen guys online like whack their bolt to lock the thing closed on there, and that can be the number one cause I've seen outside of um, having like small burrs around the lip of the chamber in there. But uh, most likely it's caused because of a... Uh, non-clean or non-polished extractor face right there for that. So always polish that extractor face for clean, smooth operation. And if you also want to get better, better operation your gun too, I recommend upgrading the springs um, for your um, for your firing pin as well too. Uh, upgrade a spring to like a stainless steel, maybe about twenty, I think about twenty-three. Um, the guys online, I, I bought a couple of these things online. This is not a uh, a stainless steel one, but it's it's in a replacement one I got on the line. It's about a 20, it's about a 21 and 21 power, or so I say 21 pound power one on there for it. I got a couple stainless steel ones in my other Mosins, and they're about 24. And they help the um, the gun close easier on um, on the ball, I should say, itself on there for that. And it uh, makes the firing pin go into the primer a lot quicker and harder and faster because um, some of the older primers on the surplus ammunition out there uh, they're quite hard and you want a nice hard and fast strike on them because um, it might cause a misfire or no strike or you might get a light uh, you might get a little dimple on the um, primer itself and it doesn't want to fire right so I always recommend upgrading your firing pins spring on here to a higher higher potent one on her. This this one, so you buy this before I about twenty, I think about twenty one pounds on there for that. But uh, do that, and uh, your gun will, will like cycle better, especially when it's closing on the bolt on your well too. And the other thing you want to do to have it function um, better as well is um, uh, get some steel wool. Uh, you can also use uh, Scotch Bright, Scotch Bright 3M pads. You can get some of that stuff out of the way over here. There we go. You can get Scotch Bright. I got, I got a whole stack of these damn things here. Scotch Bright pads. I recommend taking these things and basically wrapping them around the firing pin like this, 
And, and putting the, uh, the firing pin in a drill and, and basically holding it over here and basically spinning it. So this is nice and smooth all along the entire thing so it has less resistance. So whenever you're, um, it's locking up in here, it doesn't have as long as resistance as before. It's another way. Uh, it probably helps as a teeny bit, but uh, you want your bolt to be as smooth as humanly possible when it's in a gun because if it's, uh, if it's like too stiff, uh, it hasn't been broken in yet or uh, the parts um, have, have rust or they got some kind of a um, friction causing problem on your floor then it's best to polish all parts that you can so your gun will cycle perfectly fine for that so if anybody has any questions about what I talked about here or uh, if you need to know we can buy these things that they're on they're on eBay they're for about four or five bucks um, I think you buy them in like unissue condition because basically they, these are relatively cheap on there anyway and I always recommend my new my new um, uh, lubricant as well as a penetrant oil here for my guns is Kano Aerocryl Oil. It's the aerosol spray, comes in the orange can. You can buy it on eBay or you can buy it directly from them. And I give two thumbs up because it seems to be the most potent uh, cleaner that I found for my guns to date. And um, it's probably the best on the market right now that, I, that I've basically seen. So if you want something that cleans your gun out thoroughly, uh, this places water and it prevents rust, so it basically does the same thing as your typical uh, Hoppies number no. 9 cleaner out there for that. So that's basically what I recommend right there for cleaning out your gun because uh, if you use P but if you use PB blaster, uh, this stuff's relatively thin and it'll um, eventually uh, dry up inside your barrel and stuff like that. It won't it won't uh, prevent uh, rust and stuff like that, but. Uh, this, this is my like second choice right here if you have to have it. So, anybody has any questions, comments, whatnot, but I talked here, uh, just give me a message, uh, leave a message at the bottom of the uh, video, and I'll try to answer any questions, or uh, if you want to know where you can buy some of these, these springs, uh, the also extractors, uh, or the uh, complete trigger assemblies for the finished Mosin M39s, uh, just leave a message here or I'll also try to put some information about that as well, too So have a, have, a, have a great Christmas, but it's the day after Christmas. So that's why I was leaving this message right now. So sorry about that So I'll see you